Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm preparing to feed my two youngest bins. So if you've ever been to my channel before and you've seen my videos, you know that my oldest bin is always top left, kind of reading across from left to right on the top row, but then I kind of get into this squiggly S pattern and um, it's more like a backwards S I guess, right? So if you go through that pattern, the youngest stuff is always down here off to the right and today it's these two youngest systems that I'm planning to feed down here like I do sometimes I put together a few little statistics about these systems just to put things into reference the the two systems at this present time one of them isn't even that young anymore but basically these are the ones that I'm grouping together as my younger um, bins I, I like to keep things as kind of like a buddy system and feed things in pairs if possible or manage them in pairs for that matter because then if one thing's happening in one bin and not in the other bin you know since management and feedings have been consistent you know it might lead you to some other thing that's causing the the difference between the bins for troubleshooting purposes whatever just point of reference just my preference for doing it that way but the two systems we're feeding today the younger of them is just a little bit over three weeks old. It's only received two feedings, and of those two feedings, one of them I really count as the food that was included in the build of the bin. So since the bin was launched, there was only one for formal feeding of the system, and that was eight days ago. And in the, in the case of the older one of the two, the 67-day-old bin, it's over two months old at this point, that one hasn't been fed in almost two weeks now, 13 days. And in that case, it's already received eight feedings. So it'll be feeding number nine, feeding number three for these systems. So I'm going to put on a glove and bring these systems up on the bench. Before I do, though, let me just show you really quick what I'm going to be using to feed them with. They're right here on the table already. Pretty routine. The stuff you see here in this tray is a pretty wide assortment of, you know, vegetables, some cabbage, some Brussels sprouts leaves. Um, odds and ends, other things like that. A few other very clearly recognizable items such as banana peels, raspberries. I've also got the filters as well as the coffee from, uh, from a, a number of days worth of making coffee. Not to mention this supply of coffee right here and its entire quart of it. And the stuff you see over here in this jar, this is just pulverized eggshell. It's my form of grit that I use in my systems. And in my newer systems like these, I do prefer to try to include grit pretty generously, in the, at least in the beginning. After a while, I know that the systems probably have grit in them, but in the beginning, it makes sense to include it in almost every feeding. So I'm going to go get those systems up onto the bench, and we'll get to work. We're going to begin with this one, the younger of the systems. It's only been one feeding in here, and about, I guess, three additions of worms. I had hauled all the worms out of one of my older, now retired systems that has had the material all harvested. And from there, I had three hauls of worms. I think something in the neighborhood of about 2,000 estimated to be in here. On my third haul out, not a lot of people suggested the quantities, but I think... Combined with my own estimate, I seem to pretty much agree with the quantity of about 400 worms being added here last go around, which was the, the, the smallest quantity of worms added to this at any given time. I believe the largest one was probably the first haul out, out of that old system. I think we had estimated about a thousand worms coming out of there. And then the other thousand came during the last two, during the second two haul outs all right so this paper towel i've not really used paper towel on the surface before i've typically used newspaper they seem to enjoy it and they seem to be able to stick to it pretty good too <laughs> but i think we've gotten them all off there's always a chance that i missed a little one somewhere a little tiny skinny one maybe stuck under a piece of something but this piece of paper is pretty damp i don't worry Pretty sure that if there is a worm stranded on that thing, he'll be fine for a little while at least. Besides the feeding we're going to apply, this stuff came out of the bin that we harvested. So um, I'm pretty sure it was out of there. 
it was out of a system or maybe it was out of a system that I'm driving towards harvest at this point stuff that I knew that would just not break down so I figured I'd place it into my newest bin it would give it plenty of time to go mostly the shells of probably avocado or mango I believe a stick other things that I didn't even know what the heck they were I couldn't figure out what this was <laughs> but uh this is going with today's feeding as well I'm so curious about how my newest bin is doing all the time I can hardly wait to get in here so let's poke around a little bit, but let's also get these two pieces of cardboard that also came with the last haul out of worms. These pieces of cardboard were actually one piece making up the little divider wall that I use sometimes when I <laughs> migrate my worms. Just to separate off the section of the bin where the finished castings are from the area that you're building the baiting area in, trying to lure the worms into. This way, right between the cardboard divider, I always know that's where the border is. The last feeding, this might be already part of it, right? A piece of banana peel. Although the breakdown process would suggest that I must have fished that out during the last feeding and didn't get fully submerged. Because usually anything that you add, you, you're kind of paying attention to the stuff you just added, making sure that it's all nicely submerged. But a lot of times it's the stuff that you had pulled out to make room for the new feeding that you kind of forget about ends up out on the surface but didn't seem to bother it <laughs> didn't seem to bother that piece of banana because it's got a lot of wear and I, I think it's got a lot to do with the you know keeping the whole system nice and damp for the worms that's why I like the plastic coverings so I think we're actually bumping into bits and pieces of the previous feeding over here I'm just starting to open up the trench where we're gonna add today's feeding Plenty of bedding in here, as you would imagine, for a bin that's only three weeks old. Most of it from the original build. All these leaves and stuff. But I use all kinds of paper and bedding when I built a bin. So even though this thing has clearly got no shortage of bedding, we're definitely adding bedding here as well. So it's such a key important variable. Like one piece of bedding is going to be the paper that this stuff came along with. How do you like that? We're already, we're already down into it, right? This coffee will go in here, but we'll sprinkle it across the top and use that piece of paper as bedding. We'll grab another one from here too. This one's still covered in coffee. How do you like that? Maybe we'll set a little kind of pattern like that around. Well, you know what, I got more coffee I can add from the box. Why don't we just start spraying, spreading this stuff in. A little bit could stay right here with the paper, right? Let's start dishing out today's feeding. You know what? It just kind of occurred to me that I don't have a lot of material in this bin yet. It's still pretty shallow. I gotta have enough to be able to cover up with. So I'm actually gonna see if I can kind of push this stuff down a little bit. I know that what I'm pushing down against is probably some worms, so I'm trying not to be too rough. I'm still kind of pushing it about and moving it around as I'm doing it. Giving a lot of little wormies a nice little back rub there. All right, let's, let's bring in the rest of the stuff we're going to give them. Let's just go right down the middle, right? I did try to portion it out evenly so that on either side of the coffee filter we'd have about the same amount of stuff. Yeah. Plenty of banana peels in here. I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of action when we come back in here next time. Here's all those Brussels sprouts, leaves, and berries, and whatever else. That's a pretty nice feeding, right? Yeah, before we drop in the other dose of coffee that we're going to give them out of that other container, we'll drop in the grit, we'll drop in the coffee. Okay, Ooh, a good amount of that. And got a little bit left for the other one. And then we can start covering up some leftovers. I wonder what happened with those banana peels. They're right here, right? Should we get them down in there too? I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. I just worry about bringing in bugs, you know, having some sort of bugs sensing that, you know, tasty morsel without it being very well covered and then, you know, them coming around to try to get a bite of it. There's even more bedding type materials, some nice cardboard chunks. Here's 
here and there I do bump into a nice little mound of worms just chilling out there probably enjoying some yummy morsel from the last feeding wow <laughs> this is the um, sliced up avocado seed and it's just it just crumbled like a cookie in my hand well like a wet cookie <laughs> all right that's fun all right let's uh let's get this bin covered up we'll put these cardboard chunks back where we found them the old divider wonder how long they're gonna last back on with our paper towel it's getting pretty worn down the middle over here but it's doing pretty good I gotta say eh, it's not that old yet did I forget anything I don't think so go get the other bin now this you can tell it's a little bit bigger right the container it's um it's my larger size tubs it's a little wider than the other ones they're about the same length they're about the same depth it's just a little extra width I use a little extra plastic too. that piece of bubble wrap we just removed to cover up because this piece of plastic on this cardboard here is just not going all the way out to the edges let's see what's going on over here that was kind of the idea what you saw right there me being able to lift this up with just one hand flip it over so to see the other side it's um you know intended to let me not have all this material flopping around all over the place and make it easier to clean off and it's working pretty good I like to say what do we got going on here at this point you know you saw how I had those two little cardboard strips on top in the other system it's one of the things I like to do same with the paper towel these pieces of coffee filter here we're attempting to um, do that same sort of thing give the worm sort of a um, nice carbon rich food source right there on the surface as well as a place to hang out kind of a continuous smooth surface sometimes it's kind of a party spot in the bins here you might want to give it a little something a little more because they're also chewing it up as you know time goes on now this is the bin where there's also some stuff a little few eyeball things going on right away you'll already notice I had sprinkled some diatomaceous earth that's the stuff that's kind of going around the outer perimeter because last time we came in here the place was crawling in these little tiny mites and I can still see a couple of them here and there you know here and there just one or two of them but previously it just seemed like they were everywhere crawling all over the walls when we were in here working and I thought that that might help reduce their numbers Stuff is no good for them if they make their way into it by accident. And that is kind of the intent. The stuff in here feels, you know, much more large and chunky. And that reminded me, as soon as I touched something large and chunky, was that, like you can see a chunk of it over here is the towel. There's just a beach towel <laughs> spread around in here. I think it is in a couple pieces, maybe two or three pieces. But it's, you know, a good section of beach towel portion of a beach towel stripped up into a few chunks we were always so careful not to rummage around in these bins because we were feeding all the red wiggler systems going around all the different corners that new system we just fed didn't have that going on there so by the time we got to its first feeding not too long ago it um the whole pocket feeding exercise had ended in my red wiggler systems and I'd already returned to feeding down the middle I suppose one of these was probably also meant to mark where we last fed. <laughs> so, yeah, the last feeding would have been here, but then, you know, going back, backwards, counterclockwise, this was the last corner that got fed that way. And then I went back to center feedings. The other stuff that you'll find down in some of this um, bedding is in this bin, besides weird towel objects, <laughs> there's also weird pine cone objects. So... Here and there I like to run a few test materials or test objects in my systems to see how they go. In this case it's, you saw it, pine cones and beach towels. Maybe some other weird stuff I'm not remembering, but we'll see. I guess before we check in on the most um, recent feeding down the middle, we can take a peek at some of the corners. Knowing that that's where we're going to find a lot of worms, where, you know, 
a feeding applied two times ago, maybe perhaps two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, would be a spot where you would expect to still see a whole lot of worms hanging out. A lot of what they were given was eaten already, but here and there you'll find the shell of something. Not even sure what that is. Avocado probably. You can still see some of the avocado inside of it. Here's a piece of the beach towel. All very popular. Very nice active corner there. I guess it doesn't hurt for me to be able to air it up a little bit. Fluff it all up a little bit. Make sure stuff ain't matted up against itself or against other stuff. Here are two large objects. <laughs> Stem of a tomato plant or the vine or whatever. All right, I don't know. Should we continue with the old corner inspection? The only reason I'm really interested is because it does feel getting much drier and drier as I make my way back, especially to here. Three times, three feedings ago was the last time fresh food was applied here. So we're finding chunks of cardboard um, egg carton, the uh, cut up tubes of maybe paper towel or toilet paper tubes, and a lot of leafy matter and cardboard. There is another, um, these are also clearly parts of an egg carton. So there's clearly a, you know, a little bit of dryness happening right here. And the plastic coverings, I've been questioning how those plastic coverings are working since it's kind of like not one continuous good covering that I know is dependable. It's, you know, two perfectly good um, coverings, but just not, um, kind of not really complementing each other and not working well as you know, a combination. I just feel like I've always got these gaps and openings providing a little too much airflow into these systems and this is one of them where it feels like stuff is a little bit dry in certain spots. Although, you know, when we add the food today it'll bring with it some moisture. If today we can provide the system with perhaps a slightly better covering then maybe, um, the moisture level throughout the whole system can kind of equalize. The stuff that could use a little extra dampness will get it. If we just don't let it evaporate out. Alright, time to feed and get done with this. I just kind of get sidetracked. Thinking about stuff we could be doing. So yeah, 60 plus days, right? Close to 70 days at this point. Still plenty of um, cardboard and different types of bedding and leftover foods, stems of things. But, you know, considering the last time this bin was fed, I believe it was fed down the middle. I don't see many signs of anything. <laughs> you know, I'll just use this piece of sh shrapnel paper as a little bit of bedding to go with today's feeding. And we've got a little bit of this too, right? A little bit more bedding to include with today's feeding. Let's lay it down in here. Yeah, I mean, this bin, having not been fed for almost two weeks, makes sense that there's not a whole lot of leftovers from the last time we were in here. Pretty timely feeding. Luckily, some of the, I guess maybe whatever was fed last time must have been like a really easy... Um, fast decomposing material because it's just all gone as far as I could tell maybe it was just some sort of leafy stuff like this I would think in two weeks we're not going to see any of this probably none of this either perhaps a little bit of this that's a nice feeding we've even got a little bit of coffee to go with it I think there's a little bit remaining oh very dry let me also give them some grit here as well. What was this, the eighth feeding for this system? The ninth feeding? You'd think that at least a few of those probably included grit, if not all of them. So you got to assume that there's probably a good amount of grit already floating around in the system. At least that's my guess. We're going to go back to Mark and where we last fed, which is right down the middle. And, um... That also provides a little spot for worms to 
hang out on the top surface. In fact, you know what? I got another one right here. Why don't we double the area for them, give them even more room to hang out. Now, as far as the plastic covering, that one with the cardboard wrapping it, this thing, and that bubble wrap as well that was that it was working in tandem with, I'm thinking it's time to retire this. So I'll try to return as much of the castings that are stuck to it back into the system. I do have a material that I've been wanting to use. I'm sure it's going to work great. If you ever drive by a, a house, like a new house being built, and you see that that plastic wrap that the stuff is in before they put up the siding or whatever they're going to put out as the outer surface, and it's, it always has that word on it, right? We all know the word because we all see it all the time, and it's Tyvek, right? Tyvek is that um, material that doesn't let like moisture soak through, so it's waterproof from that point of view, but it's... Um, it's porous enough to permit the uh, the movement of air through the material. So I've got this envelope here. Um, oh, it's going to be. Let's see. It might be tricky to open this thing up. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Maybe I got to cut that off. But the, like the sticker end of the envelope that this used to be. I just kind of opened up the envelope, so you can see all the little tabs that connect to each other. So I just pulled it all apart at the seams and this stuff if I measured correctly is going to go edge to edge all the way around no sweat and now if I could just get a piece of cardboard one that doesn't have a piece of plastic wrapped all around it <laughs> that could rest here on top as a little bit of a weight kind of a paper weight and keep this thing down level so it is a little bit um, hard the material you know it doesn't like want to just fold I think I mean, it's got folds in it, clearly, so maybe I can kind of put little folds in it where I need them to be to keep it in place a little bit better. But I think with just a little tiny bit of paperweight on top, it should be able to stay pretty flat, and as a result, it'll push all those corners and edges up against the, um, the container wall. So I think this is going to work well. I hope it does, and I think that's kind of cool, too, to have material that you know is going to also allow kind of breathability while not allowing, you know, uh, evaporation. At least that's what I'm hoping for. My first time trying it, so I don't know. I'm curious to see what the results are gonna be. A little upgrade if it does work the way I'm expecting. So yeah, T stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're done here. It was just these two systems I wanted to feed today. And things are looking good. Number one, I'm glad that that diatomaceous earth seemed to, you know, get the mite situation a little bit under control. At least that, that's the way it seemed to me between, you know, not seeing any on the edges and None of the material, from what I could tell, I think we're in good shape from that point of view. The other bin, the newest bin, is coming along nice as well, so um, good check-in. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.